Hello everybody, it's Andrea, welcome back to the channel. Sorry, that's my spare battery. It's been a while since we've done a colouring chat, so today we're going to do one in Twisted Tutus by Deborah Muller. Uh, it won't come out any further. I'm, I'm playing around with my setup to try and get it more comfortable for me, but it's not working. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to do one from this, and we're going to do... Uh, not that one, next one. This one. Not this one. Oh dear, this one. I really like the fact it's got all the stars and things around it, so. Let's do it, let's do it. I might have to move the camera around a bit to get that, my leg in and, and the thing. I, I really need to get a better setup. I've got, I have got a ring light because my big light's gone and I actually prefer the way the ring light looks. And it's got a mobile phone holder, so I may try filming on my mobile phone. Um, just to test to see how it goes at some point. So let's have a look. So I haven't done a colouring chat for a while. I've been really lazy again with uh, videos. Obviously I've done my books and my colouring book haul and my completed pages. And I did my reading wrap-ups because of course I'm doing a lot of that as well at the moment. So... But I'm so tired, as Jennifer's so demanding, she's at that age, that at night I just want to crawl into bed, read for half an hour and go to sleep. But other than that, it's all good. So I'm back now, I'm going to try and film two or three times a week, doing colours and chats and looking at things. I am, am cutting down on how much I'm buying, because uh, everything in the UK is really spiralling out of um, control. Price-wise, we, we've got a lot of inflations at like, uh, what is it, 17%, I think? It's really, really high. No, 7% rather, not 17. But uh, I'm just going to adjust this slightly so that you can see what I'm doing. There we go, it's better. Uh, so, things that, prices are going up on everything from food to gas and diesel, electric, um, water. Everything's going up, so... It's very difficult at the moment. So I do need to cut down. I am still buying a few books here and there, but not many. So Jennifer went, has been to loads of parties. Not only do we have her birthday, um, the following Saturday, no, the following Sunday she had a, a party to go to. Then last Saturday she had a party to go to. And next Saturday she's got a party to go to. So of course we've had to buy things for that, little presents and stuff. But, oh, it's a nightmare. All these birthdays at once, you know. My mum's birthday's in a couple of weeks. I've got to get her, go, go and get her a present and a card next week. And that'll be on Sunday. I'll just nip into Tesco and get her some... Get her a nice bottle of whiskey. She likes a good bottle of whiskey. She doesn't expect much these days. But I do like to get her something. And uh, Paul's dad's birthday's around the same time. So he'll sort his dad out. I'll sort my mum out. And it'll be from both of us. Well, and Jennifer. And the cat. Cat's fine. She's fine. She's all good. Which is the main thing. See, I think I am going to try and do some filming on the phone. Because it might make life a lot easier. I just don't know how long I can film for so I need to test it. So, uh, but, uh, you know, I'll still use this camera for other things but oh that's the wrong one. I don't want that. That's fine. Uh, so what else has been happening? I've been tidying up the room so I can do eBay I've decided. Oh it's getting there slowly. It's, there's so much stuff and I've got to sort it out. I've been sorting out my Carrying supplies and putting them somewhere else. Um, sorted out some of my books and put a load of books in different places to clear off the Marilyn bookshelves. There is still a few bits on the Marilyn bookshelves I don't want on there, but I'm getting there slowly. So I've just got to put uh, some things away. Um, for instance, I've got a pot of pens that I use, um, like biros and stuff that I use for work, or things like my Winkostellas. Um, and stuff like that in and, and uh, water brushes but it's too tall to go under this little section I can put certain things under there but not them so eventually I want to get my TV put on the wall so I can put certain supplies up on the top 
Um, but I've got to get the room into a state where I can have somebody come in and do it because there's no way we could do it because the walls are too thick in this house. And we'll need a, a builder. We know somebody who will do it and I'm not worried about the cables hanging down either because it's just me in here most of the time watching TV or, you know. Uh, that's from the new set of Artezas. One down there. So what have you all been doing? I need a black one for her eyes a minute. Is that black or is that blue? That's a blue. So, oh, do excuse me, I've got pens everywhere. Uh, up until tonight I was also, because I was tidying up, I was putting all the colouring supplies that were out on the desk to put away and then Zed knocked one of the boxes off and they all went everywhere. I'll keep that one out in case I need it. Um, so I was very annoyed. <laughs> but saying that, it's all good now. I, I sorted that lot out today and now we're getting there. It's, it is getting there slowly. The idea is that I'll feel more like doing eBay every other night or whenever once it's done. So I'm thinking that um, when she's in till three, um, two of the days I was going to be doing eBay, but I think I'm going to be sorting out the bedroom, this room, the office, bedroom, spare room, library, colouring place, filming zone, studio, uh, while I'm doing it so that it's tidy. Part of the reason is I just can't face trying to do it. I also now need to find my spare lamp because my lamp is broke. I don't know whether the cat has done something to the wires or whether the bulb's just gone. I really don't know. So I'm going to have to get the other lamp down out of the attic, swap them over. Which is alright because I said I've got a ring light here and I'm using that now and it actually really lights up beautifully. So I use this lamp and holder when I'm doing face-to-face -face TikTok videos so it's really good for that. So, so how have you been? Have you all been okay? You're safe. How is the rule of Covid where, are, where you are? So over here um, in Wales, we have different rules to England at the moment. England have got rid of masks in pretty much every setting. They've got rid of Covid passes and they're doing away with self-isolation soon. Now over here, it's slightly different. Which obviously makes travelling to and from the two countries interesting to say the least. So over here, we're still wearing masks in most places. That has not been cancelled. Um, however, from the 18th, they're cancelling COVID passes, but businesses can, if they so wish, request that you wear, uh, have one. They also plan on getting rid of oops, masks, um, partially for settings other than healthcare settings, shops and buses, so retail. Which is pretty much where we are. I, I don't know whether that means health and beauty salons you can go in without. I would still take one to be on the safe side with my guys. Um, and then they're hoping that at the end of March to do away with the masks. But they haven't decided what they're going to do about the self-isolation rules. Because the her doctors at Sage and everywhere haven't suggested that yet. But it's something the government are doing. Potentially because Boris is trying to save his arse. And that's what I'm saying on it because of his lockdown parties um, but I'm not you know so that's the situation here I had a lovely dream this afternoon and because I well this morning this morning yeah I'll explain why Jennifer decided that half past two was a good time to wake up and need the toilet which is fine so sh that took ages to get her back to sleep at half past four she woke up after having a nightmare it took me about 40 minutes to 50 minutes to get her back to sleep and half past six she decides to get up completely so I've had I had hardly any sleep so that was fine we went downstairs she came in here for a bit watched a bit of tv in here out of the way to let Paul get his sleep and then we went downstairs because I wanted a cup of tea and I wanted some breakfast and I never got it in the end but she wanted something so I said come on we'll go downstairs then so we went downstairs and then about nine o'clock, Paul came down, or half eight, Paul came down, and I said, I'm going to bed. <laughs> After a bit, I did. I went back to bed. 
and I went back to sleep and I dreamt we were in Tenerife. Ugh, and I wish I was there now because it has done nothing but rain all day long. And uh, yeah, it's not good. It's not good when it rains like that. This video is only going to be about 30 to 40 minutes long, so, so it's not going to be a long one today. And we'll finish it off in the next video because we're on 10 minutes already. Um, what else have I been doing? Any new channels have I been watching? Don't know. I've been watching some of the old favourites like Gabilosis. Absolute Oddity, I think it's called. My phone's making funny noises. It does that every now and again. <laughs> it's because it sounds like I was watching a video on it a minute ago. Um, uh, Finders Beepers History Seeker. Still watching them, guys. Funny, funny, funny. Uh, I was watching, uh, um, I think it's Absolute Oddity it's called, about the sad end of the actress uh, Peg Entwistle. So uh, Peg Entwistle is an old time actress. I, I can't say she's a star because she never made it as a movie star. She only ever made one film but she was a Broadway star at one point. She was born in 1904 in Port Talbot, South Wales, so not far from where I am now. I can't tell you how far, but not far. It's up the M4. Um, and uh, her father um, moved her to New York when she was young after his first wife died and he married a new wife and wife and he, he was an actor over there and he appeared on the stage and that's how Peg got interested in it. Her name was Millicent Entwistle but she went to Peg um, after the song Peg of My Heart and that's how she's known. So tragically her stepmother died very young leaving behind two young boys, Milton and uh, Bobby. And then her father was also killed in a, a, a hit and run. I, I'm not sure whether it was that way around or the other way around. I think it was that way around. And um, so Bobby and Milton went to live in California with one of her father's brothers. And she stayed in New York and lived with another one. And she started getting stage work and she was doing really well on stage and then it all sort of fell apart for some reason and she decided to move to Hollywood because everybody was going there to become a star. So she wasn't the first and she hasn't been the last pretty girl to move to Hollywood. So she moved in with her uncle on Beechwood Drive and her brothers, her half brothers, her step brothers and, or half brothers, I'm not sure really anymore. I keep getting confused whether they were his or her her father's sons or whether they were already with her mother her stepmother I don't know and she appeared in a, a film called 13 women which we'll get into in a minute so at some point um in her acting career she was acting I think it was in San Francisco on stage and a young teenage Betty Davis turned to her mother and said I want to be just like Peg Entwistle because she she was the reason that she wanted to become an actress. She was inspired by her to become an actress. So we have Peg to thank for the magnificent Betty Davis. I'm sure she would have done it anyway, but I think that was the catalyst that really knocked her into wanting to do it. I want to be like Peg and Twistle. So she was supposed to go to New York apparently to make a do another play. But instead of going, she reneged on that contract and signed a contract, I think it was with Universal. Uh, she appeared in a film called 13 Women in which um, an evil character played by, I think, Myrna Loy brainwashes people into killing either their husbands or fathers. And in this film, she brainwashed Peg's character into killing, uh, stabbing her husband. However, due to the Hayes Code, this was 1931-ish, due to the Hayes Code, um, the film was cut, drastically cut by so long, and Peg's 18-minute role was cut down to three minutes, sadly. Uh, reviews weren't good for the film because it had been butchered. Uh, I mean, cuts like that are never, never well done. 
and it practically it practically destroyed her she had lost all of her clothes her new york apartment had been repossessed along with the clothes and furniture because she hadn't paid the bill she owed them a grand um so she was broke she was jobless she wasn't homeless but she didn't have a place of her own she was 24 years old and still living with her uncle so she told him uh, one night that she was going to go and meet some friends uh, for a bit she went out instead of going out she walked up Beechwood Drive up into the Hollywood Hills she climbed the service ladders up to the Hollywood on the Hollywood sign up to the letter H uh, in those days the sign said Hollywood land uh, because it was an advert for a tract uh, to sell houses Hollywood land was an estate and they used it to sell the houses there so it was a big advertising sign massive billboard basically which um, had um, oops, sorry um, the lights would flash on and off so it would flash the holly then it would flash wood then it would flash land then it would flash Hollywood land um, like that in rotor now so she used the service ladder to climb to the top of the H and we don't know how long she was up there whether she sat on the edge or whether she stood on the edge she flew through herself from the top of the H on the Hollywood lands from the Hollywood land sign from the H the next day a woman walking or hiking in the canyon because you could really get close to it back in those days you can't these days it's all fenced off um, um, they uh, spotted a woman's shoe and then looked down into the canyon and saw the shattered body of Peg Entwistle. They called the police, the police came and took the body away. Peg did leave a suicide note saying that she was a coward, that she was sorry that she wished she'd done this years ago because it would have been better for everybody. It's really tragic, really tragic. Now, at this point, there was no ID on her because there was no ID on the body. So they published it in one of the papers and her uncle saw the note and he recognised her handwriting. And so he went and identified Peg's body and uh, yeah very sad story she was only 24 years old she's just a kid just a kid but we all know when you're that age everything if it doesn't go right is a disaster and everybody's against you you know you're, you're 24 you, you are grown up but it must have been one disappointment after another for that girl. Um, and it's it's quite sad, really, that she went through what she did. Because And the sad thing is, the next day she received a letter, either after the lead role in a film or a play. I always thought it was a Broadway play, but I, I don't know 100%. So that's a tragedy, is that she... Had she not... <laughs> given up had she just held out for 24 hours she probably would have had a good career and that is the tragedy the tragedy of it because she was obviously a good enough actress if Betty Davis took note of her and said I want to be just like her you know that's not something like that's not to be taken lightly from a star of the calibre of Davis so for Davis to say that she must have had something special she must have had some kind of star quality but yeah very sadly she didn't survive it was around the time Jean Harlow was becoming a big star so yeah Hollywood eh when you think of it Old Hollywood is the dream factory. We think of it with nostalgia, but it was a viper's nest. It really was a viper's nest. We look back on the films, and the films are wonderful, but they were without weren't without their controversies. They weren't without their issues. Um, we can look back and look at these films and say, "Oh my God, that's so racist." At the time, it was just the way it was, um, rightly or wrongly, definitely wrongly, because I still think that's wrong. Um, even in the 20th century, people knew better than that. 
or should have. I'm obviously not going to get into a discussion on that because I I do like films like Gone with the Wind. I know there are issues with it and I recognise there are issues with it. And I think as long as you recognise those issues, then you can watch the film. There's issues with films like The Wizard of Oz, The, the, the Munchkins, or the treatment of Judy Garland on set, the hours that they were forced to work. The things that the stars went through, I mean, the first Tin Man, Buddy Ebsen, almost died because they powdered his face with aluminium dust and that dust got into his, his lungs and he was never really the same again. And it took him months to recover, but they wouldn't wait, so they recast him with Jack Haley. So it's... You know, and then there was the, the Wicked Witch, Margaret Hamilton. She, in the first, her first scene, when she disappears into a puff of smoke and a fireball comes up into the air, uh, she, um, the, the lift <clears throat> dropped, but the, the fireball went too soon and she caught fire. Now, a stagehand on set whisked her back to the medic room as quickly as possible after they put the fire flames out. And this is where it gets truly horrific. He got alcohol solution and cotton wool to pull her makeup off. She had third degree burns on her face and hands. And he says, I know it hurts, honey. And this is her speaking. This is These are actually what she said, he said. I know it hurts, honey, but I've got to get that makeup off. There is copper in that makeup, and if I don't get it off, it's going to burn through your skin. There was copper in her makeup. Copper. And she was off for several weeks while she healed. Um, and when it came, and that is actually the scene you that that is actually the take you see in the film. The scene with the uh, wicked witch flying. And when she paints Surrender Dorothy, they wanted Margaret Hamilton to be lifted on the broom up into the air and she refused to do it. Her double had to do it. And I think her double had an accident and, and later died. I'm not 100% sure on that because it's something I've heard. I know she had an accident. If you really want to know anything about The Wizard of, my Wizard of Oz, whether it's the films or the books, um, any of the other Oz um films and cartoons and things, whether it's Tom and Jerry's Oz, uh, The Muppets Oz, all of those, Return to Oz, Journey Back to Oz, The Great and Powerful and so on. My advice is to on YouTube go and follow Tori Carmelito. If I remember I'll put a link to the channel down below and on TikTok it's under the Oz vlog. She is absolutely fantastic. She surely knows her beans. She has been collecting Oz memorabilia for years. I have been following her for years on YouTube. She's one of the first people I subscribe to and I still like to watch her and when she comes up on my TikTok feed Hers are uh, videos I will always pause and watch. I never scroll past them. I love to see what she's got to say. I mean, one came up today, not of her, but of somebody else going on about this theory, this, this conspiracy theory that a munchkin hung themselves on the set um, of the scene. I think it's if I only had a heart when they're leaving the, the woodman's cottage and you can see in the clip something clearly hanging from the set. But the problem with the set was it wasn't a set. The background where it is was a matte painting. So you couldn't hang anything from it anyway. This is what annoys her and myself because I've heard this countless times. And that piece of footage has been doctored. In, in fact, if you go back to the original film, the original print and the original VHS tapes, and Tori's done this on her channel as well, and actually watch it, you can see that it's clearly a crane in the background. And then, I mean, somebody comes in, but there weren't any birds in, the, in anywhere, real life birds in the film, and there, there are. If you watch the scene preceding that, you can clearly see cranes wandering around. They hired them from the LA Zoo. So it's just people want to believe the worst about the, the film. And there were terrible things that happened on that film. You don't need to make up things that happened on that film or any other film because there will be enough numbers of horror stories. Take for instance Singing in the Rain. Debbie Reynolds had dance lessons from Fred Astaire in the end because he found her crying. 
And she was crying because Jean Kelly was working her so hard and wasn't particularly nice to her because Jean Kelly was a genius dancer. Debbie Reynolds never danced properly before. She's a brilliant dancer in that. You watch it, it's fantastic. But she, and she worked so hard that at the end of I Emmy, mean, if you watch the Good Morning scene, it looks so effortless. But they filmed for so long and she worked so hard that her feet bled. So there are horror stories on every single film. If you want to, to look for them, you don't need to make up more horror stories. You know? You, and, and, and Judy was terrible for telling stories on, from the set of The Wizard of Oz that weren't true. She really was, like, about the munchkins um, trying to take her out for dinner. And then, of course, she would tell the story about how, how she said, oh, no, my mum wouldn't like it. Um, and she said, I'll bring your mum along. And how that came into her being sexually assaulted by a munchkin. The munchkins, if, from what I gather, adored her. And, you know, she would share chocolates with them. Not that she'd have them very often because of the way she was treated, but, you know, she would... They adored her, and, 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 you know, but it's a story. If she was good at telling stories, always the storyteller was Judy Garland. But unfortunately, people take it, run with it, and make it something it's not. And that's not... That's not fair. If you just watch the stories as she told them... You know, they're exaggerated. She did tell tall tales and they were entertaining and they were funny. And even her daughters would say, oh, this didn't happen or yeah, this happened. And even though they weren't there, I'd say they got a better idea of knowing what their mom went through than I do. And I've been a Garland fan for many, many years. I mean, absolutely as long as I can remember. I can remember watching them as of us being terrified of the scene where we did the where the did the sur surrender Dorothy scene. It absolutely terrified me. Right, need to change battery. Yes. Right, battery changed. A little bit longer. I'm just going to start the background. I'm going to do denim blue, or shall I do it black? Mm, I do it black because the glitter will stand out better. Actually, I use that sharpie I've got out for her eyes. Um, and then we'll leave the rest because the rest of it will be done, um, apart from the bottom, will be done with Glitter Expert, Glitter Pal, gel pens, I'll get them out. I've got them here, but, you know, I might not do all the background either, I might just do 10 minutes. So as you know, I love Hollywood and I love Hollywood trivia. I'm always willing to learn. Um, and so I know that if Tori is telling me a story or telling a story on her channel, she's researched it enough for me to know that she's telling what can only be the truth. Um, John Fricke is another person I would believe. Because like her, he is an Oz historian. You could say I'm a Marilyn historian. If I don't know the answer to a question, I'll go and find it. Now, I am um, getting a few followers on TikTok now on my Marilyn account. So I've got two, one for general life and books. Because um, I like to post funny cat videos when Zed does silly things. But I also like to do book videos, mostly book videos, uh, and stuff like that. And camera stuff sometimes, if I've got anything to show. Um, but I also have one that's called Marilyn and Me. And I post just Marilyn related stuff. Kind of like the Oz vlog, it's sort of like the Marilyn vlog. And I love it. Um, and I am getting a few followers now. Um, I don't post every day, but I do tend to post two or three times when I do post, so. Um, people are starting to ask me questions now, which is great. So um, I'll be filming that tomorrow night. So when I come up, because I've done this tonight, I'll film again Tuesday, I think, if I can. I will do I, blah, 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 blah. I can't even speak. TikTok videos tomorrow night. And it's just a matter of me getting into some sort of order for doing all my different type of work. So a day for eBay, a day for TikTok, a night here or there for this, and so on. So, And I am slowly getting there. And I am enjoying it. So yeah, I mean, if you're interested, go and check out Andrea Life. Or... Marilyn underscore and underscore me. Those are my channels on TikTok. 
you want a question about Marilyn, if you've got a question about Marilyn, if you're just about her death, you can you can do it, but just be aware that I am not going to give you the conspiracy theories because I have my own belief. I have gone through every single theory and thought that sometimes it's possible. And I've come out the other side. So, yeah. It's hard, really, when you're... I mean, I've been a fan of Marilyn for nearly 40 years. I've been collecting for 30-odd years now. It's got to be, isn't it? 30, 32 years? Yeah. Properly collecting. I did get my first items in 1987. So, you know, that's 35-odd years ago. It's 35 years ago. And I still love her as much as I do. And there are times when I don't I don't watch her films very often these days. I don't. I want to on our new big TV downstairs. I really, really want to watch Gentleman for Blondes. But I will wait for a night when Paul's out. I've got to check he's plugged in the Blu-ray. Uh, well, it's the PlayStation 4. Three, four, five? I don't know anymore. We're on five now and that is four. And I will put on the Blu-ray and I'll watch it on this great big screen. It's a 55 inch screen. It's lovely. Our previous one apparently was 49 and it looked so small next to that one <laughs> when we got it. So. I'm only buying at the moment um, a few books here. So for instance I've got The Next Beauty of Horror on order. Even though I've got loads of whips in those books to finish, I tell you. Oh, I missed a bit of air there. Hang on. Can get that yellow out again. Uh, including the Elvis one, it's just that I haven't. I'm one of those people I actually get bored with the big picture. Sometimes I need to take a break. I will get back to it though. I want to do my diamond painting. I haven't done diamond painting in over a year. It's just the thought of getting it all out and having it spread out on the, the desk. I don't know, if you want to see a diamond painting video, let me know. That'll have to be on the phone now. Because there's no way I could diamond paint on this desk with the camera where it is. So. Yep. Something going on. Cat, I expect knocking something over. She's terrible, she is. So, what am I doing? How am I getting on? I'm reading The Stand. I've been reading that since the 1st of February. It's that big, it's taken me that long. I've still got about 400 pages to go, but I feel like I'm getting there now, so I'm gonna read some of that. I'm also reading The Crimes and Times of Jack the Ripper, which came out in the 70s, I believe, by Tom Cullen. It's a very small paperback. Um, it won't take me long to finish that off when I get straight onto it. I've got a book on my phone I'm reading every now and again. I've still got that wartime secret to read. So my plan is, I don't worry about the one on the phone too much. I'm going to finish The Stand and The Crimes and Times of Jack the Ripper. I'm going to try and finish A Wartime Secret and then I'm going to hit Dracula with all I've got. The only fly in the ointment, or it's actually it's not, it's honey. <laughs> the only honey I'm getting, the only problem I'm going to have is that Ma Michelle Morgan's new Marilyn book comes out this week. And I could re re receive it at any day. So you know everything else is going to go on hold. That's why in a minute I'm going to go and read my, at the stand, try and get a good chunk of that done tonight. Even, you know, if it's only a hundred pages left. Because I want to get Michelle's book read and a review up. I want to get it TikToked. I want it YouTubed. I want, you know, everything. It's going to be on everything I do. It's going to be on my book blog, which I have started doing again. So um, I've only got, I've only put two posts up this year, but I am doing it. And I will probably put up a few more posts up this week. Uh, so if you're interested in my book blog, it is booksbooksbooks.blog. And you'll see the latest post was photographs from my reading journal. And previous to that, it was a review of the book, The Midnight, Midnight Library, by Matt Haig, which I absolutely adored. 
and that one will be becoming a part of the permanent collection. There's a few books coming a part of the permanent collection now. It's growing again. I'm trying not to tell Paul, just sort of sneaking them downstairs and putting them on the shelves. There are some I can get rid of. There's one up here that needs to go down there actually, which is the Cardiff Bay Murder. I might take them down to Mums, I don't think she's read those. There are a few books out this year that I want other than the, there's two Marilyn ones, obviously Michelle's is one of them. Uh, the other one is uh, by Terry Carger, who was the daughter of Marilyn's voice coach, Fred Carger, who Marilyn fell in love with. That's coming out later this year. Other than that, the books I want that are coming out this year are, is it book five or book six of The Vinyl Detective? I think it's book six, I'm not sure. The next Vinyl Detective by Andrew Cartmore. We missed last year for some reason, I don't know why. Um that one then of course there'll be another Jodie Taylor Chronicles of St Mary's is coming out later in the year that's uh, a catalogue of catastrophes there will be other books there'll be a Peter James coming out he usually publishes in around May I'm gonna have a look put some of his in my wish list I will put my wish list my Amazon wish list down below um, there's all sorts on there so don't don't think don't be obliged to send me anything by the way it's just there if you want to you can I know some people do but you know i i don't expect it it's just there it's there's coloring books there's pens um there's books on hollywood books on photography there's just a lot of reading books um basically i use it a lot at christmas um i either send a list of what i want to my brother or the link to my wish list so but i will put it down below it's not going to hurt if anybody wants to be a book fairy or a colouring fairy, that's great. If not, I don't mind. I'm not, I'm not setting up Patreon or any of those nonsense things where you have to pay. I don't expect that. I get I get a little bit of money from YouTube every now and again. I do it just because I enjoy the colouring. I really do. I enjoy the colouring. I enjoy the colouring books. I just and I enjoy talking to you guys I mean, that's why I make a week weekly vlog I, I, I don't have to do that I don't monetize it it's just for a bit of normality in this crazy world and also to show that everybody we all have the same sort of issues from time to time there's a great TikToker called the Ship Mums Club she's from Swansea she's absolutely fantastic I love her to bits I love watching her videos because she got fed up of seeing all these perfect houses and perfect parents on Insta parents and that um, in reality their houses probably only look like that when they're filming and she shows the reality of it like the bounds of washing and the danger cupboard one was funny And things like that and she's funny and people say oh, I'm going to report you to CPS because your house is messy and what am I like because your furniture doesn't match does it matter if your furniture doesn't match I've never had matching furniture well except for when I was married and we had built-in sharps fitted bedrooms but you know as long as a child is clothed fed and clean and they're in a safe environment doesn't matter if it's a bit untidy I've got all Jennifer's toys to put away. She just got them out because she, she had a bad tantrum, threw them all over the place. Today she was putting them back and playing with them, so she was actually putting them back where they belonged. She says, I threw them, I was mad. And she, she can admit that, she admits she was mad. And she's still so young she hasn't got the words, so I don't get angry at her, I just try and calm her down. I talk to her calmly, I hold her, I cuddle her, I let her cry, I let her vent. She doesn't hit me hard, she's not hard enough, but I let her tap me. I think, don't hit, Hit's not, hitting's not going to solve it, it's not good. If you can't find a word, just cry and mummy will try and figure it out. Because even says she says, I say, you haven't got the words, have you? And she'll shake her head. I say, it's all right. It's all right not to have the words. You'll get them. Eventually they will come. And she's safe and she knows she's safe. She knows she can do it because she's safe. And that's the most important thing. 
I don't know how long I've done now. I think the other video was at 24 minutes, so this is 36. So I will finish this in the next video, including the background, just to make it long enough, because I know it's quite boring me doing the background, but still. <laughs> we can have a chat. So you'll be seeing this, I don't know, either the same day as the weekly vlog or the day before, I don't, tonight, I don't know. It depends how quickly I can get it edited. My, my laptop seems to take forever to edit at the moment. Let's just get that around there. That's it. So yeah, we'll carry on with this in the next one. Let's have a look at what we've done. I have still got oops, all the stars to do. Um, her wings to do. All the stars and the rest of the background. And this, I'm assuming it's, I don't know, it could be grass with flowers on it. Let's do a dark green. Um, and tufts of grass I don't know what it is but it is pretty so that is what we've done so far I'm going to edit this together and I will see you very very soon in the next one bye